All right, here comes the brick road, guys. It's about to be uh, an earthquake for sure. Here we go. Oh, yep. Uh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> my car feels like it's gonna. <laughs> my car feels like it's about to fall apart. Seriously. Oh my goodness. So how bad is it owning a lowered car with bigger wheels? Well, it's actually not too bad. Well, who am I kidding? It's actually kind of bad. Well, it's a little complicated because there are a lot of determining factors, such as how low your car is, how skinny did you have to go on tires to accommodate bigger wheel sizes, and even where you live at. This right here is my 2008 E93 BMW 335i, and about a couple months ago, I decided to lower the car and go up one size in wheels. The stock ones came in 18 inches, and I decided to go for 19s. And of course, with those two things I expected the ride quality to be different but not as much as I'm experiencing at the moment so today I'll be sharing with you guys my experience with the 335i and hopefully it'll help you guys decide if you want to do the same all right guys so the first thing I'm going to show you guys is what setup I'm running on the 335i which includes the rims the tires and the suspension so let's go so here's a quick rundown of my setup my car is currently lowered on BC BR series coilovers yeah I know a very controversial set of coilovers but I'll explain its pros and cons later on as far as wheels go I'm rocking some 19 by nine and a half V VMR V803 wheels with a plus 25 offset all the way around. Wrapped in Falcon Alzina's high performance summer tires. Front tires measure 235.35 and rear tires measure 265.30. This setup is a little aggressive for my car, but I made it work. Well, sort of. So yeah, 19 by 9.5 with a plus 25 offset is pretty aggressive in the front. A lot of BMW owners typically go with either 8.5 in the front and sometimes they push it with 9, but I decided to take my chances and go with 9.5. Funny because I remember talking to VMR and they told me not to go 9.5. They wanted me to go 8.5 so it can be plug and play because 9.5 might need some modifications or some tweaking to get them in there and not to rub. But see, I took a chance anyways and I didn't have to do any crazy modifications and I was able to lower it quite a bit. As you can probably tell, the front tire needed a bit of a stretch in order to be able to fit properly in there. The rear tires did didn't need to be stretched because there's enough room to accommodate 265 since the wheel doesn't turn and I don't have to worry about it rubbing on the inside. So yeah, I took a risk when I went nine and a half in the front, but look at that fitment. It works perfectly, no modifications, and it sits just right without any camber. Nothing against you camber guys, the ones that are into like that Stance Nation type of thing. Not me, I like it to be flush and straight with no camber. But you see, not everything was perfect. If you look at the rear wheels right here by where the fender is at, um, it was actually rubbing right here on big dips and bumps, so I did have to get a small fender roll to um, fix that. Well, I thought everything was fixed until I had uh, multiple passengers sitting inside of the car, and I noticed it started to rub again right here. And actually, you can tell, you see this? This is from the arm roll. It's rubbing right there in this corner, and you can't roll that part. You have to shave it, which I'm looking to do pretty soon. And the reason it rubs in that corner here, let me see if I can show you guys the angle. You notice how the wheel just kind of toes in a little bit this way? I think that comes like that from factory for better handling. But for that reason, that's why it rubs in that little corner because the tire is just sticking out just a little bit. So the fix for that is to uh, either cut it or to shave it down like I'm about to do pretty soon. So there's two ways you can fix it. You can either shave down that corner or you can do what I'm doing right now for the time being, which is adjusting the dampening settings to the coilover so you can make it stiffer. That way it doesn't have that much of a bounce and it doesn't hit that little part of the fender. By the way, these are extenders that I got for the BC coilovers. I purchased those separately, so it's much easier to control the dampen setting because if you didn't have these extenders, you would have to take the lining off and all the plastics and everything to get to the top of the shock, which is not too bad on the E92 coupe version, but when it comes to the convertible version with all the stuff in here, yeah, it's very time consuming and it's a headache. So if you're looking to go super aggressive when it comes to the wheel setup, especially in the front, make sure you get coilovers that have uh, camber plates like the BC coilovers do, because in case there is an issue where it's rubbing or it doesn't fit right, you can always camber the wheel inside and you're gonna have much more clearance. And you see right here, these are the dampen settings. The ones in the rear look the same way. If you don't get extenders, this is what it looks like in the rear once you take everything apart back there. So yeah, a lowered car with bigger wheels does look good, especially when you can fill up the fender wheel like I did right here. It looks so good on picture, looks great on video. But see the repercussions that come afterwards when you decide to go with an aggressive fitment like mine or even more aggressive, you have to worry about rolling the fenders, pulling the fenders, even removing the entire liner inside of the fenders at times, cambering the wheels inside for clearance, or even like in my case, you can curb rash the wheel. You notice how the rim sticks out farther than the tire itself. 
Yeah, imagine taking this one through a Taco Bell drive-thru. You can easily curb rash those reels if you're not careful. But it looks good, right? Who cares? I mean, that's how I think. I don't really mind going through a little bit of a struggle to make sure I make it look how I want it to. But for those of you guys that are not aware, just know that it's not a plug and play type of thing that we do here. Yes, you get the wheels, you lower the car, but it doesn't end there, especially when you go aggressive, which is what most people want to do. But yeah, guys, there's always a lot of misconceptions out there that you just buy the wheels, get the tires, lower the car, and that's it. There's a lot more work that goes into it, especially if you want it to look perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and take one of the tires off so I can show you how the BC coilovers work and how it can actually benefit you in a setup like this. All right, so these are the BC coilovers, the BR series. Um, I absolutely love these for a few reasons. One, because they're pretty affordable for coilovers. They're under $1,000 and you get a lot of pretty cool features like the camber plates that I mentioned earlier, 30 clicks of adjustable dampening settings. And these coilovers make it really easy to lower and raise your car without having to touch the preload, which is typically a pain in the butt on some other coilover systems. It's pretty easy to raise or lower your height. You just have to loosen up this lower locking nut here with the tools that are provided. And once the locking nut is loose, then you just take the tool, go up here, and then you either rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise, depending if you want to raise or lower your car. Really simple, but not so easy in the rear. I don't know if I can show you guys, but the strut and the spring are completely separate. So you have to uh, kind of take a few extra steps in order to adjust the height, and that means you're going to mess up the preload, and you're going to have to do the preload again. I know there's a lot of supporters of BC, and then there's a lot of haters because they say that, you know, you get what you pay for since they're less than $1,000, but I got to say the quality is pretty good. Uh, I do like the black finish. It goes really good with the theme of my car, which is pretty much black everything in the front. Um, so I like them, and so far they've been holding up pretty well. Not sure exactly how they would hold up in uh, states where it snows and there's salt on the ground, but here in Florida, they seem all right. All right, guys, so it's blazing hot out here today. Um, I can really use some air conditioner. I'm going to go ahead and put the wheels back under the car, tighten everything up. We'll go for a ride, and I'll give you guys my impression of how it rides. I'm going to mess with the dampening settings as well, which is something that I really haven't played with, and I'll tell you if it makes it any better when you go softer, if it makes it a lot worse when you go harder. But anyways, um, let's go. So this is awkward. A lot of people are looking at me funny because I have like this head strap on with the GoPro in order to get you guys this point of view kind of footage, which looks really cool, but I look like a damn idiot. <laughs> oh, here we go. He's staring right at me. Yep, everybody that looks at me just kind of stops and stares because they don't know what's going on. They don't know that I'm making content for you guys. All right, so we're on the road. Um, I'm pretty much riding on stiffer than normal dampening right now on the coilovers. I think I'm at 15 clicks in the front and 10 clicks in the rear. The reason I'm going so stiff in the back is because I haven't shaved off the part of the fender that I told you my wheel is rubbing up against. So I have to keep it stiff so it doesn't rub and mess up the tire. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you guys about my experience and then I'll see, um, now that I'm really paying attention to the ride, I can tell you what I feel, what's different about the stock ride uh, before I put the coilovers and the bigger wheels. Um, this is definitely not the best road to test it at because where I'm at right now, there's a lot of potholes and a lot of kind of uneven surfaces. So what I'm gonna try to do now is try to drive over to an area where I know the surface is, is a lot better. All right, this is a better road. Oh yeah. All right, so when you're on a smooth road like this, you don't really feel much of a difference. Um, if there's small imperfections, you do feel them and you actually hear them as well. Obviously, my tires are much thinner than the stock ones I had on the 18 inch wheels. So there's less cushion. Not only that, the car is a lot lower. So there's less travel on the shock, meaning you're gonna feel a lot more of it naturally. Like for example, this road right here is pretty smooth, but it has tiny cracks on the road. You can feel every single crack on the steering wheel and by your feet area. And you can actually hear it, it's pretty audible. You guys can probably pick it up on the microphone as well. But also keep in mind that I am running a little bit stiffer on the back at 10. But remember, lower the number, the harder it is and higher the number, the softer it is. So I'm running 10 on the back and I'm running 15 in the front. Um, so it's definitely not the, the most comfortable feeling. But when it comes to handling for sure, it's very, very responsive and it stays flat. Third gear pull. Oh yeah. Oh, you heard that, it rubbed in the rear. 
oh no. Yeah, you see like this gravel type of road, you're definitely gonna feel it. And it's not gonna feel pleasant at all. Burbles? Burbles? There it is. So it kind of depends where you're living at. If you live in an area where there's continuously uh, smooth roads, then the setting where I have it right now, 15 in the front and in the back, is actually not too bad. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take some turns right here and tell you exactly how that feels around corners. Check this out, it's a uh, little footage of uh, what I'm recording at the moment so I know exactly what's being captured and if it's filming correctly. All right, let me see if I can find a twisty road over here so we can test out the current settings I have on the uh, coilovers. Actually, there's a road right here coming up. I think it's pretty good for this test. Let me see. Mirror, let's give it a shot. Uh, this road is not the best, but we'll give it a shot. Oh yeah. Oh my God. That was a little bit of a bumpy ride because the road started to get worse. But see, that's one of the benefits of lowering your car and going coal overs, man. Through those turns, you could go super fast and it stays planted, assuming you got really good tires. But uh, yeah, that's fun. All right, let me go ahead and make a stop here and I'm gonna put the settings all the way to hard, like completely hard. All right, let's go ahead and change the settings. All right, you see the settings right here? Hard and soft, we're gonna go hard as much as we can. It's hard to do it with one hand, so bear with me, guys. All right. Okay, that's as, I think that's as hard as it goes, yep. And then we head over to this side and do the same thing. We're gonna go hard, rotate it all the way. Ah, very hard. Okay, I think that's as hard as it goes. Yep. And these are the ones in the front. Oh, yep, yeah, a yeah, little bit too hot. Let me turn off the car so I can adjust those. This is why I bring a microfiber towel, baby, so it can help me out in situations like that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and rotate it all the way to the hard setting. All right. All right, now it's hard. Go to this side as well and do the same thing all the way to the hard setting. All right, all set. I just wanted to show you guys this time around what I was doing exactly. For the next few times I changed the settings, I'm not gonna show you this part. All right, so I adjusted the dampening setting on all four coilovers to be the hardest possible setting. So this should be quite the experience because I've never tried it out. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, feels hard as a rock. Let me see these turns right here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Ah, oh! Oh, this, oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, no. That's my new favorite setting, guys. That is my new favorite setting. I am keeping the coilovers on fully hard. That is what's gonna happen. All right, so I gotta do those turns again. I am coming back. That was crazy. That was freaking nuts. It felt great, too. My goodness. I bet you, let me try to hit these little uh, reflectors on the road, see how bad it feels. Oh, yeah, you could definitely feel them. It's probably a little to no cushion on the shock right now. Oh my God, that was fun though. The guy's probably looking at me through the rear view mirror like what the hell is this idiot doing with that device on top of his head? Guys, this feels freaking amazing. I'm completely hard. The amount of control you have, I'm just turning right now. Oh yes, oh yes. I like it, the amount of control, just how it stays planted, it just feels great. But I'll tell you something, if you hit bumps or anything, you're definitely bouncing around. But of course, a setting like this is meant for very smooth roads like the track. I don't think this works for regular street driving just because when you hit any kind of bump or any uneven surface, you feel like you're kind of bouncing around because the, the shock doesn't, how do I say it? The shock doesn't, um, it barely moves. All right, I'm back on my favorite road. All right, I made it back to the turns. We're gonna try that out again. Yeah, but you can definitely feel the bumps and the imperfections on the road on the hard setting. My God, I'm sure if you drive passengers on this car, they're gonna be like, get me the hell out of here, please. It's not a comfortable ride at all, but it stays so planted. See, this is only something like car enthusiasts can truly enjoy. Yeah, but the, the, road, the ride is really, really rough. That's for damn sure. Oh my goodness, but here comes the turns again. There it goes, second gear. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, there comes the car. 
you know what, I have a really good idea where to test this really hard setting at. There's a specific brick road and not too far from here. I could only imagine that driving over that brick road on a setting like this is gonna feel like the end of the world. I'm gonna try that out. I'll tell you something, with the dampening setting all the way to the hardest, you're probably not gonna be rubbing at all because uh, you're not really getting much suspension travel with the shocks. Yep, definitely not the right quality. You wanna pick up a date to go somewhere. All right, here comes the brick road, guys. It's about to be uh, an earthquake for sure. Here we go. Oh, yep. Uh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> my car feels like it's gonna, <laughs> my car feels like it's about to fall apart, seriously. Oh my goodness. Yeah, definitely don't have the hardest setting while driving on roads like this. Oh God, yeah. All right, that was bad. Uh, let me see how uh, this car reacts to a speed bump on this setting. Hold on, let's see. Oh yeah, doesn't absorb anything. Let's you feel the, the full roll experience. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop and park and change the dampen all the way to the softest possible setting. And then uh, we'll see how that rides. I'm gonna go ahead and take a break from this freaking helmet. It is hurting my head. All right, time to put this damn headgear back on. That one looks ridiculous and two is uncomfortable as hell. All right, it should be good enough now. Um, I went ahead and I adjusted the dampening for all four coilovers to the softest possible setting. And I'll tell you something, oh my God, night and day difference. Feels like I'm driving on clouds right now. Speed bump, oh yeah, couldn't hear anything. But the ultimate test is this brick road that's coming up right here. Let's see if it's gonna be any good. Uh, I'm scared. After driving it with the hard set and it was pretty damn bad. Let's see, oh my God so much better you can still hear it a little bit but it feels better it makes noise but it feels so much better than the hardest possible setting i'll tell you something though it's a lot worse on this side than the other way going back over there it felt better i didn't feel like my freaking brain was gonna pop out of my head so that's a plus um, but obviously in the performance department it's probably not gonna perform as well it's probably gonna be a little bit more like a bolt feeling, but we'll see, the car is still lowered technically, so it should uh, still perform better than the stock suspension. Um, but um, let's see. Yeah, definitely uh, the ride quality is a huge difference when you go from completely hard to completely soft. Remember the 30 clicks of difference between the hardest setting and the softest setting. Um, this feels much nicer actually feels very close to what my sports suspension used to feel like before I installed the coilovers onto the car. Let me run over one of these deflectors in the middle. They feel better. They feel much better. See, in my opinion, the ride quality is not really impacted so bad because of the ride height, but more because of the thin tires on the wheels. Um, originally, I was rocking, I think, 225 40s in the front, and two 55, 35s in the back. And I pretty much just went one notch skinnier on the front and the back. And it's crazy how much of a difference that does when it comes to um, being a comfortable ride. I'm pretty sure if I was to lower my car on the stock 18 inch wheels with the Meteor tires, the ride quality would be much better. But see, once you lower the ride, you know, upgrade to bigger wheels, thinner tires, you combine all that, then of course you're gonna lose a significant amount of ride quality. I'll tell you something though, the dampening setting to fully soft, God, it makes the ride quality so much better. So in order to get a better ride quality with bigger wheels and a lowered ride height, then you have a few options. One, you can probably raise the coilovers just a bit, if that is what you have coilovers, raise the height a little bit more so you have more suspension travel, that way the shocks can work better. Two, you can go for meteor tires, but they're probably gonna have to do some serious modifications, you know, underneath the fender, so uh, that's probably not gonna be an option. And three, you can just have your settings on fully soft like I have it right now, and it's much better. But we're gonna go ahead and test the, the curves coming up over here and see how it's gonna, turn around the curves on full soft setting. All right, let's try it out. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, yeah, I can't go as fast on these turns with the soft settings, that's for sure. I can already feel the rear wheels slipping completely. Well, there you go. Now you have to make a decision. Do you want to go for a stiffer ride, which is better around turns and overall more fun to drive? Or do you want to go for a softer setting, which is much more comfortable, which is perfect, I guess, for daily driving, right? Because you're not really going to be driving all crazy and stuff like that. Um, so you kind of have to pick your choice or you can go with the original set and I had on before which was uh, 15 in the front 10 in the back It's like a good combo or maybe you can even do 15 clicks in the front Which is right in the smack middle or 15 in the back and I guess that's a good middle ground between soft and stiff So what's my verdict? Well, if you're looking for better performance Especially around turns and you live in a city like Orlando where most of the roads you drive on are smooth and well taken care of Then bigger wheels on a lowered car isn't too bad and it's actually quite enjoyable But if you live in a city where roads are terrible with lots of potholes and imperfections Then I probably wouldn't recommend a setup like the one I'm running on my 335i 18 inch wheels with meteor tires is probably the best way to go with bad roads If you're looking to get coilovers to lower your car I do recommend getting ones that have dampening settings as it'll make things much more flexible i'll link the br series coilovers down in the description below if you're interested in getting a set i really do hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did make sure to hit the like button and as always thanks for watching till next time